Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going over day 10. 10 of the August Nico Daily Challenge. Hit the, uh, for August, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. Uh, I just want to get someone uh, on my Discord actually recently gave me a, a thing. Uh, so I started doing these Lead Code Daily problems on April 1st, uh, April Fool's Day, on 2020. Um, you know, that's when they start having them. And today is August 10th. So that means that, and I've done every daily problem. And that means that I'm actually at a 496 day streak. So I'm close to 500. So let's celebrate that somehow. Come join me on Discord and give me some support. And maybe I will figure out something fun to do or something. I don't know. Anyway, so today's problem is flip string to monotone increasing. Um, yeah, so I, you know, usually I, I solve these problems live. So if, it, if it's a little bit slow, fast forward or skip ahead or whatever you need to do. Okay, let's actually read the problem. Find the string if it consists of zeros followed by some ones. You're given, okay. Okay, so basically for this one, okay, so this is just going to be, you know, um, brute force in a smart way, right? You can maybe call it greedy or something like that, but I, put, I think I, I visualize this as brute force. But basically my understanding is that, okay, so you are given a string and you want to convert it to some variation of uh, X zeros and Y ones followed by, um, so something like that, right? And it, and it can have zero zeros or zero ones or so forth. So basically, we're just trying to get something like that. So then here, then the idea here, the, which is why I could say brute force, is that we just try every possibility in a smart way. So the, um, by every possibility, I mean that there are only n of them, uh, maybe n plus one of them, uh, or five one hours at heart. But basically, you know, for you know, you have these, and then these are the, all the possible strings, right? So one at a time, you can think about them as moving the ones from right to left, and then dot 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 all the way to one 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 one, right? So basically, the idea is okay. Now we want to do a you know, do a way of counting such that this is the case, right? We want to brute force this because there are only n or n plus one, all of n, say, possible things to check. Um, so for me, that brute force. Of course, you have to be smart about it because n in this case is 10 to the fifth. So if you do a naive brute force of n and then, you know, the n of these and then you do another loop through the string, that's going to be n squared and that's 10 to the 10 and that's going to be too slow, too sad and TLG equals sad, right? Is that what the kids say? <laughs> but yeah, but, but it turns out that because I think one thing that to notice is that because of all these things are zeros and all these suffixes are ones, you can actually you can actually pre-calculate um, or just count how many zeros and how many ones are there in the prefix. And of course, because they're only two digits, they're also um, complement of each other, so you can do things uh, that way. Um, there are also a lot of different ways to do it. You could do it with prefix sum. You could do it with I guess it's just prefix sum really, but you could do variation of prefix sum. You don't even need prefix sum. Uh, by that name, but but yeah, and maybe suffix sum or just re doing reverse or something like that. So let's get. So okay, I know that I've been going fast. I have couple, uh, a lot of ideas, um, but that's basically it because you know it's just about putting them together. Because basically, you know, matching. Mm, let's take this one. Say that means that we want to say okay for here, we want to count how many ones are there in the prefix. Right, because all those for all those ones, we have to transform them to zero. Yeah, and that costs one. And for this suffix, how many zeros are there in the S? Well, again, yeah. Um, again, that 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 just sums it to the number of flips. And actually, now that I noticed it, I, I know that I said a lot of stuff about prefix sum or su uh, suffix sum. You can actually just do one count for the table, and then maybe. Do a sort of a scan line from left or from right to left back. Um, I think that should work. Um, just kind of check if statements and stuff like that. Uh, maybe it's a little bit more confusing. I think. Hmm, I mean, it's not confusing. I think so. I know that I talk a little bit more here on these streams than I do if I was doing a, on a on a contest or even an interview. Because if I was an interview, I would go right into it to be frank. Because time is of the essence. But 
right now I'm thinking about when I say confusing, I don't even mean that confusing or that hard. You can reason it out very quickly with some if statements or just going through the cases. But when I when I'm doing it in a competitive uh, manner, um, you know, this is maybe I'm, like if I were to kind of look at this and gauge myself, I would say this is probably a five minute problem for me, maybe four minute problem, something along those lines. And if I make a mistake, maybe six, seven minutes, but something along those lines. Um, and you can watch me do problems during the contest if you, you know, and I have that like internal clock, right? And then, however, if I do it in what I say a confusing way, it just means that there are certain things that I have to prove and think about the edge cases, right? So if I don't have to think about edge cases, then I probably save one or two minutes, maybe more, maybe less. Um, and, you know, that's... Eh, maybe that doesn't mean that much to, to viewers at home and, you know, whatever. But but when you're doing competitive, um, every minute counts and every, you know, tie-breaking thing matters and stuff like that. So that these are the things that are going through my mind. Um and that's why I, I like to prefix some version better because it literally is is the statement, right? So given given you know some zeros and ones, you literally just ask yourself, okay, you know, given the given that we have seven zeros, how many ones are there, right? And and given that there, I don't know. Uh, eight or nine ones, how many zeros are there in S, right? That's an easy query with prefix sum that I'm very familiar with, where on the other thing where, I don't know, if I'm doing transitions, um, I might have to worry about it a little bit more. Uh, of like, okay, did I do this transition right? I could have typos, there are cases, and, and it's something that maybe I don't do as much with respect to coding familiarity. Um, but that said, I think that's an O of one space solution where prefix sum is an O of n space. So we definitely could go do that. Um, so I know that I talk a bit here. Um, and now for the purpose of learning, I'm going to try to do the O of one space. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I could get this wrong. Uh, it's not impossible, but but yeah. Um, so basically, okay, so first we want to start at this, we want to start at this uh, comparison with this string, right? So how do we do that? Well, let's look at n is equal to s first, and then we just do maybe once is equal to zero, and then for x is equal to s, uh, if x is equal to one, one sooner. And you can do this in a one liner, I know, um, but eh, I don't know. Okay, fine. Let's just do something like this one um, for x in s, if x, something like this, right? Um, you can do it in a couple of ways, but okay. So this counts the number of ones. I think even x dot count one, maybe, hmm. like, or s, right? I think this is actually good. Uh, so yeah, let, let me point it out. I, I don't no other APIs or or I because I'm always jumping between like four or five languages, so I'm always not super sure about what the APIs are, to be honest. Um, but I know what I want to do, just that sometimes it's not. Okay, so now this has the number of ones, right? And then now, okay, so we also keep track of a best answer, and we can actually start best off with the number of ones. And then now we want to shift this thing to one at a time um, shift there, right? So now we just go for i in range of n minus one, um, minus one, minus one. So then now what does that mean? Okay, so what this means is that if s of i is equal to, there are only two possibilities, right? So this is what I'm talking about and that I have to kind of think about it slowly and deliberately. So, okay, so if this is zero, um, Okay, so we're now comparing this to this, right? So if S sub i has a zero here, what does that mean? Well, that means that the ones are the same. And mm, this is a little bit awkward. So let's just do, because ones is a little bit weird. Okay, let's also do zeros. Uh, is it go to zero. Um, Let's, let's just say that in this case, zeros is the num um, number of uh, flips from 1 to 0, and 1 is the number of flips from 0 to 1. And also at this point, to be honest, if I was doing it with prefix sum, I would be done by now. So this is why I, you know, maybe, maybe it takes another minute, but close to it, to be frank. 
um, because I've done prefix sum a lot. But yeah, so now if s is equal to zero, what does this mean to the states, right? Well, because in here, what does i represent for us? i represents the index in which now we're matching a one. So if this is if this was zero, that means that we have to flip this zero to a one, right? Um, so that means that zeros increment by one. Yeah. And then that's it, I think. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that was not that hard. Hmm. And then else if, well, I mean else, but this is if s sub i is equal to 1, but I just want to do it for, for viewers at home to visualize. That means that if s is equal to 1, um, that means that we no longer have to come with a 0 to a 1. So you have something like this. And best is equal to min of zero, zeros plus 1s and best. So I think maybe that's it. Maybe I was wrong on this in how I worried about, about the complexity. Well, let, let's take a look at some answers, bef uh, some test cases before we say that. But, but yeah. But I would still admit that if I had done this, because this looks too easy almost. And to be honest, if I did it with prefix sum, I would have... It's all about confidence when you're doing on a contest. Um, on an interview, you have you know 40 minutes or whatever. So you have time to kind of talk through all these things with your interviewer. And your interviewer will, you know... You know, you're, you're talking to them, you're communicating, and you're just going through different things, right? Um, but yeah. So let's actually, you know, try more... Uh, but yeah, but, but, you know, it, during a contest, um, confidence is very important. So that's, that's why I, I would have gone for the other one because I would be more confident about that one. But here it looks just too, like, like if I wrote this without any explanation, you might be like, Hey, what, what did Larry do here? Right? So I think that's kind of uh, a little bit sketch, but let's give it a submit. Okay. It looks good. So. Yeah, I guess it wasn't that bad once you do a reasoning, but that is the point where right, I have to slow down for the reasoning, and I I don't trust this one that much, even though it'll turn out to be AC. Okay, so that's all I have for this one. Let's go over very quickly, even though I think I vaguely did. Um, so this is linear time, because it just goes through the way to put in linear time. This is also linear time. Hopefully this is easy to see, because you also go through the way backwards um, one at a time, and... And yeah, and this is obviously constant. We just do like three or four things or one number of things. Um, yeah, and so this is linear time and you can easily see that this is linear, oh sorry, constant space because we only have three variables or four if you count n, five if you count i, but okay. All of one uh, number of variables. So it's going to be linear time, constant space, and that's all I have for this problem. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think out of this problem. Uh, I do try to Explain this a little bit slowly. So this video is a little bit long for probably a easy bomb. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I'll see you later. Stay good. Stay healthy. To good mental health. To uh, And ha have a good rest of the week. See you later. Bye-bye.